Thank you uh, for this nice introduction and for this nice opportunity to have a talk on this seminar. And uh, I'm going to say something about uh, some problems uh, between graph coloring and, and words. And I will start with uh, uh, explaining, though most of you uh, for sure know, uh, know these things very well, what is, what is graph coloring? So, <clears throat> so uh, uh, if we have a graph, we can uh, color its vertices. This is the most basic, basic problem in this area. And by a coloring, I just mean uh, any function from the set of vertices of a graph to some set of colors, whatever, whatever it is. And uh, a coloring is proper if no two adjacent vertices have the same color. So on this example, we see, I hope, a proper coloring of this uh, example graph. And, uh, and the parameter uh, related to this, uh, to this concept is the chromatic number of a graph, which is the smallest number of colors needed for such proper coloring of a graph. And we see that uh, this graph here uh, has chromatic number equals to four. Uh, so we see a proper four coloring and uh, we see that this is the minimum possible number of colors because uh, I hope we see a click here, four vertices uh, that are connected. Each pair of, of these four vertices is connected by an edge. So we really need four colors to, to do the proper coloring. Uh, okay, so I hope this is uh, well known, but if you want to ask me about some detail, please do it. And the uh, most famous theorem, the most famous result about um, graph coloring is definitely the four color theorem, which says that every planar graph uh, is four colorable. The chromatic number is at most <clears throat> four. And what is a planar graph? Uh, so this is this is also, I hope, a well-known no notion. So this is a graph that can be drawn on the plane uh, in such a way that the edges are never crossing. So on this drawing of our graph, we see crossing edges, but this graph can be redrawn so that there are no crossings. And this shows that Actually, this graph is, is planar. And the proof of this result is very, very difficult and even uh, somewhat controversial because uh, uh, the computers were used to check some part of the proof. And even today, we do not have a completely satisfactory, purely mathematical proof of this statement. Okay, but Today we are, we are, I'm on the seminar on combinatorics on words, uh, so uh, I would like to switch more closely to objects that you and I also like very much, which, which are words. And uh, indeed, if we have a coloring of a graph, so these colors are some abstract elements, this can be also uh, letters of some alphabet. So. From now on, the coloring of a graph is any function from the set of vertices to some alphabet A. So colors are now letters. And uh, if we have such a setting, then we can produce many interesting words out of such colored graph. Actually, we can get, so the, 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 the most uh, natural way is to look on simple paths in such a graph. A simple path is just a sequence of vertices uh, such that any two uh, adjacent vertices are, any two consecutive vertices in this sequence are adjacent and such a path in a colored graph pro is producing a word. Okay, so we see on this example, a simple path. By simple, I mean that there are no repetitions of, of vertices and the graph is simple, so there are no multiple edges, no loops and so on. So uh, we have a, 
word that can be read out is pad. Mm. Of course, there are two actually words because this graph is undirected, so you can take either direction and you get two words out of any any path. And we may think about uh, about the whole language of our colored graph. So if we have a graph with some labeling of the vertices, some coloring of the vertices by letters, we can think of the language of this colored graph as a set of words that can be uh, read off from, from simple parts of that graph. And in this setting, the famous four color theorem becomes a statement in combinatorics on words because it says that every planar graph has a coloring over a four letter alphabet such that in the language of this colored graph, we never have uh, words of the form XX, where X is a, is a single letter. So of course, this is just, a, just a saying the same in slightly different language, but this will, this will have a sense in what I will be uh, talking about uh, now. So I'm going to, to, to define square-free coloring of graphs. Uh, the notion which is uh, after this setting, uh, I think very natural. So a square is a, is a notion you, uh, you know very well. So this is a word of the uh, four of, which, which is a concatenation of two copies of the same, of the same word. So for instance, here is an example of a word, maybe in Polish, which is an example of a square. Actually, it's not very easy to find non-trivial squares uh, in Polish language. I, I was trying uh, when I was preparing this talk, uh, but I, I only found some, uh, some, uh, some artificial words, and that one is maybe the, the, the longest I could found. It sounds like cha-cha. And uh, okay, so uh, what is a square free coloring of, of a graph? So this is a coloring such that uh, in this language of this colored graph, there are no squares. Uh, for instance, if we have this cycle on five vertices and the coloring you see, so this is not a square free coloring because on this part, uh, we see a square A, B, A, B or BA, BA. And in the same way as, uh, as for the chromatic number, we can define the non-repetitive chromatic number, which is the least number of colors needed for a square free coloring of a graph. Of course, this parameter is bounded from below uh, by the chromatic number because this uh, shortest squares are forbidden by the chromatic number. So this is much, much more uh, general notion, uh, much ambitious problem to try to, to avoid all possible squares in this uh, graph, uh, colored graph language. So th in this example, we see that uh, with three colors, we do not, we cannot avoid uh, squares, but so we need the fourth color. And here we have uh, an example of a coloring, a square free coloring, uh, that uses four colors. So I want to say that this inequality is of course strict very often, even for so small, for small graphs. And the famous theorem of Tua can be expressed in these terms as, as a statement of graph coloring. So it says that if G is a simple path, then this non-repetitive chromatic number is at most three, because of course, of course, uh, this coloring of a path is the same as building a, a, no, no, a square-free word. And we know that, that we can do it over alphabet with three letters. Perhaps uh, Tua uh, would be very surprised to see his theorem stated in such, such uh, mysterious terms. Okay, and uh, here is a recent result that uh, solves a uh, long-standing open problem. So one of the first 
uh, really difficult problems uh, we found in studying square free colorings of graphs. So the, the, question, the question was whether for planar graphs, this uh, uh, non-repetitive chromatic number is, is bounded, is, is finite. So it was not known until very recently uh, when, uh, when these uh, five authors could prove it. And, and, and they, they proved that the, the bound that follows from the proof is, is quite large. It's over seven, seven hundreds. And maybe uh, I say something about the proof. So some of my colleagues uh, say that the proof is a bit disappointing because actually this is the proof about uh, the, the main property they, they discovered is the property of graphs. So, uh, so actually they prove that uh, planar graphs uh, have very peculiar structure, um, me meaning that every planar graph can be expressed as a product, a strong product of uh, very, two very simple graphs. One is a path, and another graph is a graph of bounded three width. And we already knew that, of course, for paths, this two way chromatic number is, is the most three. And for graphs of bounded three width, it is also bounded. It was, it was known previously. So actually, this number comes from so called product coloring. So this is the, uh, the product of a few numbers. Uh, so I could say that the, the proof is basically. Uh, this structure theorem for planar graphs plus the result of two and its and its uh, extensions. So uh, maybe there is not not too much new uh, things that could be interested in for for people working in combinatorics and words in this proof. But nevertheless, I I, I encourage you to take a look at the proof. It's not not very long. So the paper appeared this year in a, in a new open access journal, uh, Advances in Combinatorics. Here you see, uh, here you see some slide from this, uh, from this, from this website of this uh, article. And the paper is maybe 10 or, or 12 pages long. So the proof is not, not, uh, not hard. And also uh, on this occasion, I would like to recommend a very nice recent, very recent uh, survey uh, article written by David Wood, where you can find some history of these problems, uh, the proofs, and also many, many other open, open problems around this topic. But what, what else is left to do after solving such, uh, such holy graal a problem. Well, still we do not know the uh, the correct number of colors. Uh, the best uh, lower bound was found by Pascal Ohem. He proved he found a planar graph uh, that demands eleven colors in this uh, non-repetitive uh, coloring. So, as you see, the difference between the the upper and the lower bound is quite quite big. So, so. One obvious open problem is to find the better, better, better bounds or find the, the, the optimal value. I, I really do not know. I like to pose conjectures, but now I really don't know what can be this number. I think that, that this should be two digit number, but, but I, don't, I don't take a risk to propose any value. I don't think it's 768, definitely, but maybe it is also not 11. OK. Mm. But also, I would like to pose mm, two new, um, maybe not so new, one, one is relatively new, uh, really four, four color conjectures for such uh, square free colorings. In both conjectures, uh, the number four is appearing. And this is not, not only from sentiment, sentimental reasons uh, connected to the original four color theorem. So, so one conjecture is the following. So, so uh, we know that uh, in the two problem, uh, 
we need three letters, but when we go down to two letters, we still uh, can produce uh, arbitrarily many words, avoiding large squares. Uh, I think it's it's a known result that there exists, for instance, an infinite binary sequence in which the longest square has length maybe four, something like that. Uh, so, so this statement is in this spirit. So, since we already know that with these seven hundred uh, letters we can we can make this square-free coloring of any planar graph, the question is what can we obtained by going down with this number of colors. And uh, well, maybe, maybe that would be exciting problem to try to go down up to four colors and still uh, avoid uh, squares uh, of, uh, of some unbounded length. And uh, well, so why, why I'm stating four? So this is because this is the first possible number. So it is known that three colors, so the same statement with, with three coloring would not, be, would not be true. And this is because uh, it can be proved that uh, uh, if we restrict to three colors, uh, so we can find graphs that have uh, arbitrarily long paths uh, in one color monochromatic paths. Mm, so three colors definitely is not, not enough for such property, but maybe four. And if not, that, that some number between four and 768, but, but maybe four. So this K can be very, very large. And another conjecture, which is also, I think, natural, another direction in this, uh, in this topic, now is to look for k powers. So a k, k power is is just a concatenation of k copies of the same word. Oh, here I have a, an example, an interesting example of a statement in Polish language, in which you can find uh, seven power. Of course, after after you concatenate, then in this uh, word you see a seven power. So this m a uh, repeats seven times, and this is a real statement. It, it, it has some sense in Polish language. So it sounds like imama, mama, ma, mama, wygę. So maybe, uh, and, and also this, this I, I found this statement in a historical book about uh, Polish mathematical school. So, so this type of problems were considered uh, probably for fun by, by uh, mathematicians uh, in Lviv in 30s already. And some of them found this uh, as a, an example. So most probably, uh, uh, maybe, maybe optimal, maybe not optimal, I don't know. Okay, so, so uh, the, the conjecture is that uh, for some number k, there is, a, um, there is such number k such that Every planar graph uh, can be four colored so that this language does not contain k powers. So now, now we know that this k is finite, but uh, but no, no, I, I mean finite when we when we look uh, when we allow bounded number of colors. But again, the question is, can we save uh, the property of of uh, of avoiding powers? Uh, with the lower number of colors, maybe we can go down to four. Okay, and and I also would like to um, to show you one example when these uh, problems uh, for graphs uh, have a real application to some purely word problem. And this this is about a, a kind of a to a game. So there are more uh, two alive games. Uh, I will present only one, and this this application of graph coloring um, properties. So let, let us consider two way online game. So what is what is this game? We have uh, two players, uh, N and Ben, and uh, these two players uh, are producing collectively a sequence of words. 
on some fixed alphabet. And uh, in one round, Anne is choosing a position in an existing word, and then Ben is choosing a letter that is inserted at that position. And what is the goal of Anne? So she wants to create a square. So she, actually, she wants to force Ben to create a square, and Ben is trying to avoid squares. And when a square occurs, so when Ben cannot do anything, the game, the game stops and Anne is the winner. And let me show you an example of such a play. So they start with, with an empty word. So at the beginning, those, just one letter is, is written. And in the second round, uh, there are two, two positions uh, that Anne can choose, the first one and uh, the last one. She chooses this position and then Ben chooses a letter. In a third round, there are already three positions that Anne can choose. So consider the, the simplest situation that we have three letters in the alphabet. So when she picks the middle position, then of course, if Ben wants to avoid a square, he must uh, write the letter C. So, so you feel that the game will end very soon uh, because she will she will play that that way. So in the fifth move, in the fifth fifth move, uh, a square occurs and the game stops and, and is a winner. And of course, the problem is, uh, can Ben win with some number of letters? And we proved uh, that even with four letters, N has a winning strategy in this game. And I think this is a nice exercise. You may try to find, uh, to find a simple strategy for N, even if there are four letters in the game. But uh, when the alphabet is of size 12, then Ben has a strategy to play arbitrarily long. And the strategy is also, also simple, but uh, it uh, relies on the following structure. So this is actually a graph, uh, an infinite graph. What we see on this picture is an infinite graph. Uh, with vertices in some special points. So the, in the first, uh, first uh, phase, we join consecutive integers. In the second phase, we, we join uh, middles of these uh, segments, so, and so on. So this is a fractal-like structure, and uh, well, this, the vertices are just uh, rational numbers. Uh, that can be expressed in lowest terms as uh, fractions with the denominator, which is a power of two, I guess. Uh, okay, so so why this, maybe, well, f first observation is maybe that this graph is planar. Uh, so, and not only planar, but also uh, mm, uh, this is called outer planar because all vertices of this, so that there is a, drawing of this graph in which all the vertices are touching this infinite phase. So this is, this is called outer planar graph. And it was proved uh, before uh, by Kingen and Persmeyer and independently by Barat and Vario that such uh, outer planar graphs um, had this non-repetitive chromatic number at most 12. So this 12 is, is not, not a coincidence. I don't know if you see if you see the strategy, but well, imagine that the that N and Ben fix the length of the play, for instance, to up to 100. So they will be playing 100 rounds. And uh, and uh, well, Ben is, is, is looking at this graph. Uh, in depth up to 100. And uh, he looks at the coloring, which is non-repetitive, which is square-free on every path. Uh, in particular, it is, it is square-free on paths uh, directed to the right, which is, which is uh, enough. It would be enough uh, for this strategy. So uh, if, uh, if N picks some 
position between two existing letters, Ben is just looking at the correct point in this graph and, and looks for the color that is, that is there. And he, uh, he is, he is uh, sure that there will be no, no square in such, in such words. I don't know if, if I'm um, explaining this correctly, but this is pretty, pretty simple, pretty simple uh, idea you may think of. And this is one of uh, my favorite examples of application of some graph coloring property to, to actually proving some statement about words. Because even if you don't like game, you can, uh, I think you can rephrase this uh, statement uh, in purely uh, word, word theoretic terms. I don't know how, to, how this would sound, something like that you may extension, you may produce a sequence of words such that they can be extended in every position, something like that. And this is, uh, so this problem is also connected to the idea of extensions of, of, of words by, by inserting a, symbol, a, sim, a single letter inside a word. And this is connected to, to the recent conjecture uh, uh, in, involving extremal words that I would like to recall because actually it was stated in the first talk uh, uh, on this seminar by Lucas Moll, I guess. So let me recall the definition. So I, an extension of a word is just a new word that, that uh, uh, arises uh, by insertion of a single letter somewhere somewhere inside or at the border of also. For instance, if we have a word of length four, there are five positions that we can insert new letter to get a, a new word. And a word is uh, extremal, a square free word is extremal if it cannot be extended uh, by a single letter so that this property of square free nerves uh, would not disappear. So, uh, well, so this idea also comes from graph theory. In, in, graph, in extremal graph theory, we have uh, lots of problems. This is the huge uh, area with uh, many problems of that type. We have some, we have some property of graphs and we, we ask how many edges can we add to our graph so that it's, it will still have this property. So this is something, something similar and the inspiration comes from, also comes from graph theory. And here's an example of the shortest extremal, extremal square free word over three letter alphabet. Uh, it was found actually many, many years ago by, by my colleague, Mariusz, who, uh, probably used computer to, to find this, this word. And you can play with it by trying to, uh, to extend it. So when you, when you try extension, of course, when you try uh, over three letters, if you try in the middle, there is only one possible letter. But if you try any place, uh, you can check that uh, in each case, you will see a square. Even, even at the end, if you, if you try to add some letter, the whole word becomes a, becomes a square. And uh, so th this result is, is very recent, but the former conjecture that I never published was that uh, actually this is not true. So I, I suspected that maybe every sufficiently long square free word over three letters uh, would be extendable. So that there should be, I thought that maybe it is very peculiar property to, for a word to have, to be non-extendable, to produce a square in every, every position. So my conjecture, my original conjecture was that, that uh, every sufficiently, uh, or maybe that, that there are just finitely many extremal words over three letter alphabet. But this occurred not to be true, and, and now we know that, the, that such words can be arbitrarily long. But here is, a, here is a conjecture that is very, 
surprising and we are trying to solve it with some colleagues but i don't know how to how to attack it maybe maybe we should invoke some some graph properties uh, so uh, the conjecture is that actually over four letter alphabet there are no extremal words in other words if you have a any square free word over four letters you always may extend it to a new square free word by by uh, finding uh, the right position to to put a new letter i don't know if it is true but but this sounds uh, of course we do not know if the same statement holds for any finite alphabet so even proving that this is true maybe not that there are no extremal words but the the, the, the set of extremal words is finite over 100 letter alphabet 700 668 letter alphabet would still be very exciting result i guess okay and uh, i'm going back maybe slightly to graph coloring problems but, but just to take motivation for the next for the next uh, problem okay so list coloring what is it so uh, the the usual in the usual coloring uh, okay, so let's let's take a look at this example. So, on this this graph is definitely two colorable. So, its chromatic number is equal to two, and we see this proper coloring by two letters. But we may we may do the following. So, imagine that every vertex has uh, its private list of colors. So, still each vertex may use two colors but each vertex may have a different set of colors traditionally these sets assigned to vertices are called lists of colors therefore we call it list coloring so the, now the question is can we can we properly color uh, vertices of this graph such that the color of each vertex is taken from its private list and the coloring should be should be proper so we see that in this example it is not possible and on this on this upper uh, side of the graph there are all as well as on this down uh, side we have all uh, two element sets subsets of a three element set so whatever letters we choose uh, the, 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 it cannot be just one letter there will be at least two different letters in these chosen chosen letters so the same uh, below and therefore there must be there must be this chosen sets of letters must have non empty intersection so so there must be a conflict in in this coloring so this is a really strange situation because we have a graph with chromatic number 2 still every vertex can choose from two colors and even the total number of colors is bigger so we could think that this the coloring should be even easier, but we cannot we cannot find the proper coloring. Uh, so this graph has least chromatic number uh, equal to three, and the least chromatic number is defined in a very natural way. So this is the least number k, the minimum number k, such that whatever these lists are of size k we can we can choose a proper coloring out of these lists or alphabets i forget that we our colored sets are alphabets i'm sorry mm, okay so so we see this example but you can imagine that if the if these groups of vertices will be larger then still the chromatic number is equal to two but this least chromatic number will grow uh, unboundedly so the difference between these two parameters can be actually arbitrarily large and there are many many exciting results about this list uh, coloring in graph theory uh, one of the most famous is a theorem uh, proved by thomasen that every planar graph uh, has this least chromatic number at most five and the, the proof is beautiful it is it is uh, included in the, the book uh, the proofs from the book 
and uh, it is it is optimal result uh, as found by Margit Foyt that exist planar graphs that demand five colors. So there is no hope for something like four color theorem in this list setting for for planar graphs, but at least it is bounded in this class, which is, for instance, not the case in already bipartite graphs. And uh, on this occasion, let me just mention a recent result, uh, which says, which is, uh, well, so this, this result is uh, is interesting from from many uh, many angles. So I would say that this is, on one hand, this is stronger than the four color theorem because it is a statement about this list coloring, and we we have in the statement that uh, this graph is colorable from list of size four. But we have to slightly modify this graph. So a matching is a set of edges uh, that are pairwise disjoint. So this is this is an independent set of edges. Mm. We can say that this is also a graph with maximum degree of a vertex equal to one. So this is something like like a very simple graph, and uh, the statement is that in every planar graph. Every planar graph can be slightly modified by removing such matching, and we get already a, not only four colorable graph. We, we know that every planar graph is four colorable, but we get a graph which is colorable from lists of size four. And uh, maybe the most exciting thing about this result is that the proof is not using computers. This is a purely algebraic proof, algebraic combinatorial. I said algebraic because we are using combinatorial Nullstellen that so we we switch from graphs to polynomials and we prove some statement about polynomials. So also this is maybe the first example of a, of a theorem in in graph coloring that that is proved uh, by using uh, this algebraic method, uh, and we do not know of any other proof of this statement. So, okay, and in uh, much the same way, we can define the least non-repetitive chromatic number as the minimum k such that our graph has a square free coloring from arbitrary alphabets of size k assigned to the vertices of our graph. And uh, so, let us look at this at this definition, this problem. So in this original problem of Tower, which uh, can be can be translated into coloring of paths, we have a path and every this alphabet, every list of, of colors is the same. So so this statement says that when, when all these sets are the same, actually there is a, only one set of colors for every vertex then the coloring is, is possible, avoiding squares. But, but what if we uh, allow for, for, for different alphabets? So some, some of them may be the same, some of them may be different. So the situation is, uh, again, that we feel that this should be easier because, uh, because we have more letters in total. But the same situation was with graph coloring. And the, the more, if, even the, color, the, the set of colors is bigger, this uh, placement of these uh, alphabets vertices can be very bad and we, we may not be able to find the coloring. So this is of course not obvious, nevertheless, uh, well, a natural conjecture is that we still may uh, should be possible. It should be possible to always find uh, a letter in, in in each alphabet, so, such that the resulting coloring will be square free. So I I am stating this conjecture, but nobody can prove it. No, no many try, and the best result up to now is uh, is four. So we can. So the first, the first proof of this result was by the probabilistic method, and the second proof was by this entropy compression method. So, 
So this is a really strange situation that we cannot go down to three. And some people think that maybe, maybe it, it is very similar to, to the situation with, uh, with planar graphs when the result by Thomas and uh, gives us the bound five and there are graphs that demand five, lists of size five because, okay, so to, to show that this conjecture is not true and that this result is best possible, you should find some place, some alphabets and placement, some arrangement of these alphabets such that no matter what you choose, there will always be a square. And the same question can be asked for abelian squares, of course, and many other notions. You, you may take your favorite uh, readability notion and, and play with this least, uh, least coloring version. So an abelian, abelian square is, is a word uh, that consists of two. Well, I used the word anagram, but I hope you know that this is, uh, this is a permutation. So this second second part of the square is uh, an arbitrary permutation of the first part. And there is this well-known result answering a question of Erdes uh, that there exists arbitrarily long billions square few words of the four letter alphabet. Okay, so the same, so we may ask the same question as for, as for the, as for Tue uh, theorem the least version of this uh, theorem of Karenen. Can we, can we always produce the, such abelian square free word <coughs> out of arbitrary four, four letter alphabets, like in this example? And uh, I looked at our old paper and I found that we already stated this question, this conjecture in the form of question, and it's, I, I do not know of any progress. <clears throat> so, so we, not only we do not know if, if, uh, if four lists of size four will be sufficient, but we do not know of any constant K that for which this statement would be, would be true. Yeah, so no, no method, no method uh, is working here. Uh, no, uh, especially, so the probabilistic method or entropy compression gives nothing. So maybe some new idea is, is some new idea is is uh, needed here, or maybe it's not true. Maybe maybe there is some counterexample, but that, that should be counterexample for any finite k. So maybe it's better to try to prove it. Okay, and and the last the last problem uh, I would like to present. Uh, it's an it's an old old uh, funny problem that really shows that combinatorics and words and graph coloring are very close. So let me define what is a Cartesian Cartesian word. What, so a Cartesian word is a, first of all it is a word over a four letter alphabet uh, that satisfies the following recursive definition. So first, uh, no two adjacent letters in this word uh, can be the same. And secondly, uh, when we take a subword of this uh, word uh, with subscripts uh, forming a consecutive even integers, then these, uh, these subwords should be also Cartesian. So, I, I, so this is a recursive definition, so I don't, don't show you any any example of a Cartesian word, I could of course, but I, I think that this picture has something, something in common with this definition. Maybe, maybe these words appear somehow like, uh, somehow as uh, colorings of parts of this graph, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to, to, to be too precise, but I think this, these two definitions have something in common. And well, here is a, here is a conjecture uh, about these Cartesian words, which says that uh, if we have any, any set of numbers between zero and n, n is an arbitrary integer, uh, then 
we may always find a Cartesian world uh, of length n plus one, such that the subworld taken out of this world uh, with exactly these uh, these uh, um, indices is also Cartesian. So this doesn't sound like some very very difficult statement. Like rather, it looks like something maybe quite innocent, but actually this statement is equivalent to the four color theorem. So though, though it is stated as a conjecture, we know it is true, but, but this equivalence shows that proving this statement without using four color theorem may be, may be very hard. If you could prove it without using computers or without using uh, invoking four color theorem this would be still very uh, very exciting okay and i i think i i can stop right here thank you very much